Mga atit mga kuya, welcome back to Kuya Puto's channel. So lately po dito sa Canada, there's been many talks. It's very controversial. Immigration. People coming in here by the millions. So naisip ko po, in this video, why don't I share our own personal immigration story? Para malaman nyo naman, you know, a little bit of a background ni Kuya Puto. So mga ato at mga kuya, in this video, I'm gonna share Kuya Puto's uh, immigration story. Dati po kasi, like you know, around the time nung naglanding kami dito, maluwag pa nun eh. You know, yung mga pathways, pathways na naririnig nyo ngayon, it was different back then. Ngayon, all you hear about is uh, TFW, Temporary Foreign Worker, OFW, Overseas Filipino Worker, International Students, that's a big one. But dati po kasi, ano eh, it's, uh, if you had somebody here, sa Canada, and you know, you wanna come over to the country, the most common pathway is pipetition kanila. And then you land here as an immigrant right away. Yung po nangyari sa pamilya ko. But you know what? Before we go into that, let's go back. Let's dig deep. Yes, let's dig deep. So, it all started back in the 60s, I, I would assume, right? This is the story that I was told. As a Pilipinas po kami lahat nun. <laughs> Hindi pa po pinapangnak si Kuya Puto nun. Ano, ano lang, ano ba ako nun? I was just a twinkle in my dad's eye. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, it started on my dad's side. Yung pong uh, lolo ko, si papa. I never met him dahil nung kinanganak po ako, uh, sumalangit na po siya. But uh, my lolo used to work for the American Embassy. He held some kind of position there. And if he wanted the whole family, the whole Mendoza clan, to go to the United States, it would have been as simple as that. Dahil napakaluwag po nung, uh, ng immigration dati. That's what I was told anyways. And the fact that, you know, he was working for the American Embassy and held the position there, it would have made things so much easier. Pero ayaw po nung lolo ko. As in, ayaw niya. He wanted everybody to stay and thrive in the Philippines. Pero yung pong uncle ko, tatlo sila magkakapatid eh. Yung dad ko. Tatlong lalaki. Yung pong panganay nila, ano, ambisyoso po siya eh. Like, he had a vision. He felt deep down inside, kahit pa nung bata sila, na yung future ng pamilya namin is not gonna be in the Philippines. He felt that. He told me that. And he wanted to go to North America. Not Canada, North America. Bata pa siya nun. Problema lang kasi, he couldn't get the support sa lolo ko. Like I said, my lolo could have made it happen like that. But he couldn't get the support because the idea did not uh, align with uh, my lolo's views, right? So, he did it his own way. Long story short, this is a story that I was told. He joined the church. Ala Apollo Kiboloy style. <laughs> Anyways, yes, he did join the church. And by joining the church, he was able to gain entry to states, to USA. Doon siya naglanding. And even though it's against my, my Lolo's will, my Lolo's wishes, he did it anyways. Because, like I said, he felt deep down inside. In future, ng, in future niya, tsaka in future ng future pamilya namin, it's not gonna be in the Philippines. So he worked for the church. Naglanding nga ta siya sa Chicago, if I'm not mistaken. So many years went by. So malangit na yung lolo ko. So naging byuda yung lola ko. So what ended up happening was, you know, yung uncle ko na nasa Chicago, he was working there. And he started to send money back home para matulungan yung, yung lola ko tsaka yung dalawang brothers niya. Like, you know, my dad was one of them. And... He came up with this bright idea. Hey, you know what? Wala na si Papa. You know? Why don't I try to bring Mama over so we can establish something here? So yun po, nang, yun po ang nangyari. A lot of uh, Filipinos ngayon, you know, they can relate to this, okay? Dahil, you know, technically, my my uncle was one of the, <laughs> the earliest uh, 
OFWs, if you can, uh, if you can, if you can consider him as that, right? Like he went over to a different country, trabajo to send money back home, para masuportahan yung pamilya niya. He was doing that for a while. Then he decided to bring my my lola over. Dati kasi, the way it was explained to me again, mind you, hindi pa pinapangnak si Kuya Puto neto. This is all stories coming from my family, right? Sabi ng uncle ko, you know what? If I drive, like, you know, an hour and cross the border to Canada, I think it's gonna be a lot better in the future. <laughs> Dahil Canada back then, you know, it's, it's, it's a beautiful country. It still is, don't get me wrong, but, you know, at that time, napansin daw niya, you know, a lot of people are coming to the States a lot. And totoo yan, because nung araw, sa Pilipinas, pag nanonood ka ng, uh, ng video, nanonood ka ng movie, nanonood ka ng TV, all they can say is, oh, punta tayo sa USA, punta tayo sa USA. Ngayon, all you hear about is, oh, punta tayo sa Canada, punta tayo sa Canada, right? And na feel niya, it was getting a little bit crowded. <laughs> So he crossed the border and I don't know what happened. He was able to migrate to Canada with papers through the church. And that's how he was able to get my Lola to come over. Yes. So ngayon, the power of one became the power of two. So dito na nag-umpisa yung migration ng uh, Mendoza clan to uh, Canada. Nasa Toronto po sila nun, my, uh, my Lola and my uncle. Couple more years go by, they decided to bring my dad over. Yes. So, ito, marami makaka-relate dito. Nung, uh, nung, nung time nung dad ko, bata pa po kami nung uh, kapatid kong lalaki. Okay, I think I was maybe four years old. My brother was probably two years old, mga ganon, if I'm not mistaken. Pinetition po nila yung, uh, yung dad ko to come over to Canada to help them. Because at that time, nagumpisa po ng negosyo yung lola ko at yung uncle ko. They were uh, supplying uniforms to uh, hotels and small businesses, right? Dahil yung pang lola ko, trabaho niya sa Pilipinas, negosyante siya eh. Yung mod- modista, tawag doon, she was a master seamstress, right? Yung... Nagtatahi ng mga uniforme, nagtatahi ng mga wedding gowns, nagtatahi ng, ng mga pasadya na, na damit sa mga tao, yung mga Amerikana, mga ganun-ganun. So they decided to open up a similar business dito sa Canada. My lola and my uncle, they needed more manpower. So they petitioned my dad to come over. So iniwanan po kami ng dad ko. <laughs> A lot of people can relate to this because ganito po set up ng maraming, uh, maraming pamilya. You know, yung pong either their mom or their dad would come over to a different country and iiwanan sila doon, hopefully one day, to bring them over, di ba? So their futures can be secured. So my dad came over and natira po doon sa Pilipinas was me, my brother, my mom, my Tito Jim, which I'll tell you later, very special man to me. My Tito Jim's wife, si Tita Feli, and my two cousins. We all lived in this compound sa, sa Kaloocan, right? Kami na lang po natira doon dahil yung dad ko, yung lola ko, at saka yung isa kong uncle nandito na. And, you know, they worked on this business that they had, right? Sumunod po yung, uh, yung wife ng uncle ko. And my two cousins. Yes. Pansin nyo. Yun na, sunod-sunod na, di ba? This is how, uh, this is pretty much how things work for a lot of families back then, even now. But back then, it was more common, right? The moment one person gets there, sunod-sunod na sila. As in, sunod na sunod. So, naiwan po yung uncle ko. Dahil yung uncle ko, playboy. <laughs> he didn't want to come to to Canada and join the rest of uh, the clan, right? <laughs> Wu-Tang Clan, that's it. I guess that's why I love Wu-Tang Clan, right? Because it reminds me of my, my family, the clan. Yeah, my uncle didn't want to come over. You know, he didn't want to join the rest of the family. Dial, like I said, Playboy Sha. He had like two or three other families. You know, guapo kasi. <laughs> what can I say, babaero, right? 
So <laughs> naiwanan siya. But you know what? My uncle, since wala yung dad ko doon, we needed like a strong male figure, di ba? He stood up. He stood up. You know, he was pretty much our dad. Nung nasa Pilipinas kami, nung bata kami, he watched over us. Because wala na doon yung, yung dad ko. My dad is here sa Canada na, right? So, I love him. I love my Tito Jim very much. And he will always hold a very special place in my heart. Okay. Anyways, so, yung Tita Felico and her two kids, sumunod, nandito na sila. You know, all of them, as in all of them, were working with my uncles to Canada and my Lola and my dad to develop this business, right? You know, doon sila lahat employed. <laughs> it sounds familiar, medyo. <laughs> Dahil ngayon, isipin nyo, you know, I know it's a little bit controversial, pero pag yung business owner, Filipino, or whatever lahi, you know, hinahire nila, ganun kalahi din nila. <laughs> so we were guilty of that too back then, okay? But on a very, very, very smaller scale. So my mom, my brother, and I were the last people to uh, come over. Nangyari po yun in the mid-80s, okay? You know, one day, we got a phone call from my dad, and sabi po niya, hey, you know what? Malapit na. As in, malapit na. Tuwan-tuwa po ako. As in, tuwan-tuwa ako. Because that day, I always wanted to, to know what Canada felt like. I always wanted to know what Canada would feel like. Dahil yung dad ko po, pag tumatawag sa telefono, kinukwentohan niya po kami, you know, it's nice here, daming chocolate. Nice here, daming pagkain. You know, yung mga gamit, mura. You know, yung mga bagay-bagay. You know, it's just different. And as a kid, you know, meron kayong mental picture of how it should be or how it can be, right? So I was very excited. At the same time, medyo takot po ako because I understand na pagdating mo doon, kailangan mag-English ka. <laughs> sa Pilipinas dati, yung sa skwelahan namin, you know, there was a strong focus on, on English, right? Pero pag nasa Pilipinas ka naman, yeah, you learn how to speak English, through your school, pero you don't really use it, puro Tagalog, diba? So that was my biggest concern, you know, as a very, very young kid. <laughs> Anyways, tandaan ko nung uh, paalis na kami. Okay, we got driven to the airport. I was wearing, uh, it was a black and green striped t-shirt and itim na maong, na peke. It was uh, Levi's 501 black denim uh, na pantalon na pinatahi nung, nung mom ko dun sa Divisoria. <laughs> Knock off, right? <laughs> Uso dati yun eh. Magpapatahi ka tapos palalagay mo yung labels. Put. <laughs> Anyways, I've never been on a plane. Okay? I was excited and scared at the same time also. So we, we boarded on the plane. Nung tumataas na yung aeroplano, Nakahawak ako dun sa mom ko. <laughs> Dahil natatakot ako eh. You know, I was holding on her so tight. I go, mommy, please don't let go. <laughs> That's when it hit me. Oh my God, we're finally leaving. <laughs> Our first stop over was uh, Japan. I think, was it Japan or Korea? I, I can't remember. Anyways, nung uh, naglanding po kami dun, for the first time in my life, you know, I felt na wala na kami talaga sa Pilipinas because I'm looking around. Ang daming tao, iba-ibang uh, ethnicities. Normally, hindi mo makikita sa Pilipinas ng araw yun, right? Makakita ka ng puti sa kalsada, you're like, oh, <laughs> special occasion yan, ha? But uh, nung naghihintay po kami sa Korea or Japan, like I said, I can't remember where, stop over dun eh, for a couple hours. I'm looking, there's like, Black people, there's white people, there's Asians of different types, you know? I'm like, oh, are you still? Wala na kami sa Pilipinas? This is actually happening, right? 
So we boarded the plane once again. The next stop was uh, Detroit. Yes, Detroit. So at that time, the flight from Detroit to Pearson International Airport na delay ng eight hours. Pero wala kami US visa. <laughs> okay. So kailangan they had to uh, since eight hours yung yung delay. Northwest Airlines, which was the, the plane that we took, you know, they made arrangements for us to go straight to a hotel. We couldn't wander around that. Wala kami US visa, di ba? We're just immigrants. So we got, I think we got settled. Uh, it was a days in hotel at that time. I believe it was. And nandung kami, right? So I'm like, oh my God, hotel. I've never been in a hotel in my whole entire life. This is great. This is great. You know, social. As in social, as social. And uh nagrin yung telephono. I think it was the airlines, right? And they were asking my mom, you know, what we wanted to have. Para sa dinner. Like dinner? I <laughs> <laughs> dinner. So my mom ordered a pizza. Yeah, she ordered a pizza. Mind you, nung araw, hindi pa ako nakakatikim ng pizza. Like totoong pizza. The only pizza I knew was yung binibili ng mom ko dun sa turo-turo sa labas ng uh, simbahan sa Grace Park, sa Kaloocan. You know, ilang ang alam ko. It's not even pizza. It's like a piece of bread with a little bit of ketchup on top and then they put some, I don't know, cold cuts and then a little bit of cheese. That's it, right? But she ordered pizza. So when the pizza guy came, the food delivery guy came, knocked on our door. Ang laki ng box! As in, ang laki ng box! I'm like, is this pizza? Dahil yung pizza kung alam, maliit lang na ganun eh. I opened the box and oh my God, guys. I'm like, wow. This is what they call pizza dito sa North America. I've never seen anything like this. This is amazing. It smells great. So kumain ako. Tell you guys. I guess kaya tumabasi ko yung puto ng ganito. <laughs> because I got introduced to food. Like good food. And man, it was amazing. It was amazing. That was the very first time I had pizza, like real pizza in my whole entire life. Anyways, it was time to, to take a nap. Okay? But I wanted to shower. Dahil ang lagkit ko. Tagal ko na dun sa aeroplano, di ba? So sabi ko sa mom ko, Ma, pupunta muna ako dun sa, sa washroom. I'm gonna go take a shower and uh, do my business, number two. <laughs> Pumasok ako. Mind you, I've never been in a hotel in my whole entire life. Okay? Pumasok ako dun sa, sa kubeta, sa, sa washroom. And I hopped into the tub. And I'm like, okay, paano, paano to? You know, saan lalabas yung tubig? Dahil merong shower head, tapos merong spout, right? Tapos merong, merong knob sa gitna. Kubeta namin sa Pilipinas dati, you know, may gripo, merong balde, may tabo. <laughs> Ilang ang alam ko, right? Eto, I'm like, what is this? I've never seen this before. So, I'm like playing around with it. I couldn't get it to work. So I went outside, tinawag ko yung mom ko. My mom didn't know how to work it either. <laughs> we were the true definitions of fobs, okay? Fresh off the boat, as in fresh off the boat. So, ginawa ko ganito. Lumabas ako, sabi ko, ma, okay, it's okay. I'll take care of it. In Tagalog, of course. And then, kumuha ko nung, yung drinks na kasama ng pizza namin. It was like a container. Kasi yung laki nito siguro, right? Kinuha ko. I hopped in the bathtub, okay? And I found yung cork. So, I put the cork into the, 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 the drain. And then, pinuno ko yung bathtub ng tubig. Tapos, nagtabu ako. <laughs> I used the cup as a tabu. That was my very, very first, uh... That was my very first shower in North America. <laughs> to this day, I'm not ashamed to admit that. That's why it's a twing na liligo ako sometimes. Dito ngayon, ang tanda ko na ngayon, I'm almost 50, right? I still think about that one time to Detroit on our way here. And <laughs> since I'm talking about bathroom, after I took a shower, I had to go do number two. <laughs> okay, I had to do number two. And yeah, you know what? We had toilets dun sa bahay namin dati. Okay? Pero 
Walang tabo. <laughs> Tandaan nyo, this is a Days Inn Hotel. Okay? Days Inn Hotel. And obviously, they don't have tabo in hotels, right? All they have is tissue paper. So naisip ko, Oh my God, ganito ba yung mga tao dito? Ganito ba yung mga puti? Hanggang tissue lang sila? Then, then duminon, right? <laughs> Anyways, long story short. Obviously, I use the toilet paper. Plus, I use the, the, the drink container as tabo to clean myself up. So that was my very, very first experience. Bathroom experience. So North America, nung bata si Kuya Puto. Okay. Anyways, you know, we boarded the plane to go to Toronto. Alright, finally, Toronto. Naglanding kami sa Pearson International Airport. Tanghali nun. Okay? And walang cell phones dati, okay? So you can't just call somebody and say, hey, come over here. So, you know, we had to go meet some, our family to, to pick us up, right? My dad, and don't, he was there to pick us up. <clears throat> so, we got our luggage, then we were going up the escalator to meet up with my dad or to look for my dad. <laughs> Not gonna lie. I was happy and I was scared at the same time. I was. I was happy dahil nandito na kami. You know, we're getting reunited as a family once again. I get to see my cousins, I get to see my tita, I get to see my lola, I get to see my dad. We're, we're family again. Because we grew up pretty much without a dad, right? Dahil nagtatrabaho siya dito sa Canada. It was my, my tito Jim, you know, that stood up and played dad for us. Along with his other families. <laughs> Playboy kasi. <laughs> I was scared dahil hindi ko kilala yung dad ko. As in... A lot of OFW families can relate to this, especially their kids. Yes, alam ko siya. Alam ko dad ko siya. Pero I really didn't spend that much time with him that he was always here dito sa Canada, right? Like, he would come visit the, the Philippines, you know, to see us. But then, you know, bisita, bisita. Like a month, maybe. Three, three weeks, maybe. You know, so hindi ko siya talaga kilala. To be completely honest nga, dati, nung bumibisita yung dad ko, kasama yung lola ko, to the Philippines to see us, right? Dahil kami na lang yung natira dun eh, after everybody left. Sasabihin ng lola ko sa akin, Mark, go spend some time with your, uh, with, with your dad. Baka magselos yun dahil lagi kang nakasabi sa, sa Tito Jim mo. I never understood that. Until later on, when I got older, you know, but it was true. You know, I felt way more closer at that time than sa, sa Tito Jim ko because he stood as our father figure to my brother and I nung bata kami. And I will always love him for that. Anyways, the escalator was going up. And then my dad was there with my lola. You know, tuwan tuwa, everybody was happy. And we got reunited as a family. And that was the beginning of the rest of my life. That is what gave birth to who I am now. That is what gave birth to everything that we've done dito sa Canada. That was our humble beginning po. And I will forever be thankful and I will never forget that moment in time dahil dun po nagumpisa yung journey namin so sana naman po natuwa kayo kahit konti or at least na-entertain kayo dito sa backstory ni Kuya Puto maybe I'll do a part to talk about our first couple years here and how the struggle was because the struggle was real and I'm pretty sure a lot of uh, OFWs a lot of uh, newcomers a lot of new immigrants will totally relate to that story. So, but until then, this is Kuya Puto wishing you good night, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you is in the world. Stay hungry, stay humble, keep your soul strong. I'll see you in the next video, guys. Bye for now.